Welcome to EDA Playground Verilog Tutorials. My name is Victor, I'm the creator of EDA Playground, and today we will be creating a ripple carry counter. This is a basic schematic of a ripple carry counter. Uh, a counter is a basic uh, design module that counts up like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or counts down uh, 16, 15, 14, 13, etc. Uh, a ripple carry counter is called um, ripple carry because it contains flops where the output of one flop feeds into the clock of the next flop. Now this is typically uh, not a recommended design practice in, in today's uh, large synchronous designs. Uh, however, for demonstration purposes, a ripple carry counter is often used in your typical uh, very log courses. Uh, so as you can see, this is a 4-bit uh, ripple carry counter. We have two inputs, a clock uh, that feeds into the first flop and a reset which resets the counter. And then the output is simply the Q output of every one of these four flops. Um, so the basic element here is the toggle flip-flop. And if we go to Wikipedia we can see that the toggle flip-flop simply toggles the output whenever the clock changes. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a, uh, a toggle flip-flop module and then we're going to tie it all up uh, to create our ripple uh, carry counter. Okay, so let's uh, get to the coding. Um, we're just going to go to EDA Playground, um, our basic page over here, and um, let's start with the toggle flip-flop. So uh, we're just going to call it TFF and it has um, as we can see three uh, three signals here, three inputs outputs. It has a clock, reset and then uh, an output Q. So let's put the uh, output first and let's define what they are. We have our output Q and our input uh, clock and reset. Uh, so the basic functionality here, um, let me see, the output actually has to be a reg here because we're, it's a, this is a flip-flop so a uh, reg is going to be driven. Um, so let's do an always block, always at uh, pause edge reset because we want the reset to reset the flop and uh, and then we have to clock the flop as well so let's do or pause edge clock uh, begin so let's do the reset case first if reset we're simply gonna drive um, the output to zero with a non-blocking assignment uh, else uh, and else otherwise this is a toggled flip-flop so the basic functionality is the output is gonna toggle uh, like this so we'll close our always block and then we'll close our module here so we have a basic uh, toggle flip-flop over here. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes, but if I did, we'll find out later. So now let's let's hook all this up together to create the counter. Um, okay, so it's going to be another module. We're going to call it ripple carry counter. It's also going to have inputs and outputs. As you can see from the schematic, um, yeah, also has clock and reset, but the output is uh, four bits over here. Uh, so let's do the output first. Q clock reset. The output this time um, uh, it doesn't need to be reg because uh, here we're just connecting wires up, and the input is the same. Clock and reset. So let's hook all this up together. We have four uh, toggle flip-flops. So let's start with the first one. 
toggle flip flop one um, just hooks up the clock and reset and then the output is going to be Q0 here so output is going to be Q0 hooks up the clock and reset let's do the second one output is Q1 it hooks up to Q0 and reset let's do the next one the output is Q2 hooks up to Q1 and the reset and the last one output is Q3 hooks up with Q2 and reset and module so at this point I believe uh, we have a complete design here that uh, implements the schematic um, now what we want to do here is we want to try it out we want to actually run a simulation and see uh, if if everything works uh, before uh, going into the test bench typically um, I'd like to make sure the simulation compiles so I'm just gonna pick you know Icarus Verilog here and I'm just gonna run uh, without a test bench and just make sure there's no syntax errors click run um, nothing happened because we there was no time but uh, good news is there was no errors so now we can move on to um, to actually simulating this with some real uh, real input uh, so for that we need a test bench a test bench is typically non synthesizable uh, so we can use delays and we can use the very log initial initial block there okay the test bench uh, so for the test bench, we're going to use uh, regis to hook everything up. We're going to have a clock and reset reg, and then um, the uh, output is going to be a wire because we're not going to drive it by the test bench. We're just going to look at it. So it's going to be a 4-bit wire. We'll call it Q, just to keep everything simple and then we're going to instantiate our design here we're gonna call it uh, RCC and everything just gonna hook up straight up Q clock and reset and then let's move on to our actual test bench initial that's where gonna, our test bench is gonna be uh, another thing we need to do before I start on the actual uh, sequence to run, I'm going to uh, create a free running clock. So it's going to be uh, a 10, uh, 10 time unit period here. So the clock is going to toggle every 5 time units. Um, okay. Let's move on to our sequence. Uh, we're going to be looking at some of the waves here, so we do need to dump waves. So I'm going to create a dump file and dump bars. We're just going to, at this point, we're just going to uh, dump only one level of this test bench. Okay, moving on. So, first thing, in order for the clock to be free running, we need to initialize the clock to something. Uh, so we're going to just initialize it to zero here. Uh, so our test is going to do the following. Uh, we're going to reset reset our uh, ripple carry counter. Then we're going to let it run for a little bit. And then we're going to reset it again. So it's as simple as that. All right, so let's reset it. Uh, we're going to reset drive reset to one. And then after some time, we're going to drive reset to zero. Then we're going to let the ripple carry counter run for a little while. And then we're going to reset it again. Our reset 1, reset 0. And uh, just for good measure, let's let it run for a little bit longer. Okay, so we have our basic test bench. Um, so let's just run it. Let's do a test run before we look at the waves. Uh, it looks like it's running forever here. That is because we did not um, specify the finish statement. Because our clock is free running, uh, it's, it's just going to run forever. So let's 
specify the finish over here so that the, our test actually stops. And let's run it again. Okay, now it ran successfully. All right, we're ready to look at the waves. I'm going to click the Open EP Wave button over here, run it, and then our waves come up. And you see something interesting over here. Um, we do reset everything to zero, but then once we start counting, the counting starts from um, F and counts down on every positive clock edge. Uh, we do see that the reset happens again over here, and that resets everything to zero. Um, so that's interesting. So why does it count? Why does it start with F and not go zero, one, two, three? Well, as you take a look at the schematic, uh, what ends up happening is because this is a ripple. Uh, when the when there's a rising edge of the first clock, the output goes to one. Uh, as we expect, but this one actually triggers the next output to go one as well, and so forth. So after a reset, the first clock edge makes everything go to one. Now, if we wanted uh, the ripple carry counter to count up zero, one, two, three, four, five, uh, one way to do that would be to uh, instead of having a trigger on the positive clock edge, trigger on the negative clock edge like this. Uh, let's run it, and our outputs now are going counting up. They're counting up up to F. They're rolling over here, counting up again. Then we hit a reset, and then they start counting up again. Now another way to do that is instead of using a negative clock here, we could simply invert every input, which is effectively the same thing, right? Let's try it. Okay, uh, see, same result. Um, now, one interesting thing to do to do when debugging sometimes you want to look inside and you want to see inside exactly what's going on inside these modules. Um, so, in the dump Mars file, let's specify uh, unconstrained. So, we're going to dump everything here. Uh, let's run it, and then the waves. Let's you see we have. Um, our four toggle flip-flops here. So let's bring up the first one. Um, you see the clock and the queue, and then we can bring up the second one. And you see the clock is now the queue, inverted queue of the previous one. And then we can bring up the next one. And as you can see, there's a there's a kind of a ripple effect, right? Where which is why why it's called a ripple carry counter. Uh, okay, so let's do one more thing. Uh, Icarus Verilog is a pretty recent simulator. Um, let's see if we can simulate this design on some of the older simulators. We have GPL Seaver here and very well. Uh, so let's try it on GPL Seaver. Um, let's get change this back to one. Let's run it. Okay, it ran successfully. It looks like it's working, working as expected. Let's try it on very well. Uh, let's run it. Oh, it looks like there's an error. It contains uh, about an unexpected reg. Um, so over here, I used a newer syntax, which may um, may not be compatible with some of the older simulators. Which actually needed required you to separate your output and your reg statements. So in the olden days, you had to do uh, you had to list all your inputs and outputs, and then you had to specify the regs separately, like that. Let's see if this works. Okay, success. So um, this is the ripple carry counter. Thank you for watching.